Horton Hears the Who. Now, Horton is going to be the main character of today's story, and he's going to be trying to get all the animals in the jungle of Newell to hear all those Who's down on Whoville. So I need each and every one of you to be my Who's for today's story, okay? So I'm going to say a person's a person, and I need you to yell out no matter how small. And that's going to be the chant that we're going to say throughout the whole story time, okay? So let's try it together. A person's a person. I think you'd be a little bit louder than that. Let's try it again. A person's a person. That sounds good. Awesome. And also, Horton is going to be trying to get those animals in the jungle of Newell, the sour kangaroos, the Wickersham brothers, and all the animals in the jungle of Newell to hear those who's on that small, tiny speck of dust. So they're going to say a chant towards the end of the story. The chant is, we are here, we are here, we are here, okay? So I need your help chanting out that to loud and proud together. So let's do it together. Here we go. We are here, we are here, we are here. Okay, I think you could be a little bit louder than that, okay? You're on vacation, kiddos, okay? Mommy and Daddy won't be mad if you yell out loud and proud, okay? So let's try it together. Here we go. We are here. talking about awesome oh my god there goes horton everybody say hey horton, hey, horton. say hey horton. hey horton good awesome horton are you ready for story time yes awesome all right so carnival radiance family without further ado i'd like to present to you horton here's a who by dr seuss in the cool of the pool he was splashing he was splashing He was splashing. <laughs> Enjoying the jungle's great joys. When Horton the elephant heard a small noise. <laughs> so Horton stopped splashing. He looked towards the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again. <laughs> Just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person was calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton, but who are you and where? He looked and he looked. He could see nothing there but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why I think there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Some poor little person who was shaking with fear that he'll blow into the pool. He has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because, after all, a person's a person. No matter how small. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air. And he lifted the dust speck and he carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. <laughs> ha! Humped a voice. Towards the sour kangaroo, and the young kangaroo and her pout said, Two. Why, that speck is as small as a head on a pin. A person on that, why, that never has been. Believe me, said Horton, I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen, and I heard them quite clearly. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo and her pout said, Me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Noah. And the kangaroos plunged in the cool of the pool. <laughs> what terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover and he hustled away. Should I put this speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these very small persons might come to great harm. I can't put them down. I won't, after all. A person's a person. No matter how small. Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice, you're a very fine friend. You've helped all us folks of this dust speck no end. You saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You saved all our churches and grocery stores. You mean, Horton gasped, you have buildings there too? For my town is called Whoville, and I am who, who and we who's are all thankful and grateful to you. <laughs> and grateful to you. 
And the Horton called back to the mayor, you're safe now, don't worry, I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the spec, three <laughs> big jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's head. The Wickersham brothers came shouting, what a riot, this elephant's talking to who's who or not. And they snatched Horton's clover and they carried it off to a black bottom eagle named Vlad Vladikov. And before that poor elephant even could speak, the eagle flew off with that flower in his beak. All that afternoon and far into the night, that black bottom bird flapped his wings in fast flight. While Horton chased after with groans over stones that tattered his toe-tails and battered his bones and begged, please, don't harm all my little folks who have much right to live as us bigger folks do. But far, far beyond him, the eagle kept flapping and over his shoulder called back, quit your yapping, I'm a bird. I'll fly the night through, I'm a bird, I don't mind it, and I'll hide this tomorrow, well, you'll never find it. And at 6.56, the next morning, he did it. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let that clover drop somewhere inside a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Let's see those clovers. But I think you will fail. And he left with a flip of his black bottom tail. <laughs> I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on that small speck of dust. And by clover, by clover, by clover with care, he picked up and searched him and called, Are you there? Then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till he found him at last on that three millionth flower. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me to tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? From down on that speck came the voice of a mayor. We've had our trouble much more than our share. So Horton, please, 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 pleaded the voice of the mayor. Will you stick by us hoos while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered, of course I will stick. I will stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. Humped, humped the voice. For almost two days, you've been running around and insisting on chatting with persons who've never existed. And I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly nonsensical games are all through. And the young kangaroo and her pout said, with the help of the Wickersham brothers and dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins and Wickersham in-laws who helped I engage, you're going to be wrapped and you're going to be caged. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you got to prove now that you really are there. And his people cried out loudly. They cried out in fear. We are here. Let me hear you. We are here. A little louder. We are here. A little louder. We are here. Uh huh. We. we uh huh. 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 The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. You can't even really shoot. You heard that very well. I heard no small voices, and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo and her pout said. Grab him, they shouted, and cage your big dope. Last hole his stomach with 10 miles of rope. Horton fought back as they started to haul him into his cage, but he managed to call to the mayor. Don't give up, I believe in you all. A person's a person. No matter how small. The mayor grabbed the tom tom and he started to smack it. And all over Whoville, they hooped up a racket. They rattled tin kettles, they beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops, and old cranberry cans. And Horton called back, I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. Are you sure if he hooved out in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. Is there anyone shirking? Through the town rushed a mayor from east and to west, but everyone seemed to be doing his best. And just as he felt he was getting nowhere and almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through a door and that mayor discovered one shirker quite hidden away in Fairfax apartment, apartment 12J, a very small, very small shirker by the name of Jojo was standing, just standing and bouncing a yo-yo, not making a yip, not a chirp. 
But that mayor rushed in his shoes side and he grabbed that young twerp. And he climbed with that lad up the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. So open up your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. And when they got to the top, the lad cleared his throat and shouted out. And shouted out. And shout it out. Yeah. And that yacht, that one small extra yacht, put it over. And finally, at last, from that speck on that clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean. And the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They proved they are persons, no matter how small. And the whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true? Yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do? From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo and her pal said, From sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them no matter how small-ish small the end.